You cannot expect a positive change when you are using negativity to fight for positivity. Long time, no see. Hope this isn't too loud. I was thinking about what to make for a video today, and um, there's a lot of stuff going on, going through my mind on what to make. There was another COVID video, but I got thinking y'all already saw that, so. And what was a good video to make <clears throat> for there to be a break for three months? And uh, I thought, and it occurred to me, let's just make a video about social injustice. Thus, I don't know what the title is yet, but. But I want to start off by reading Proverbs 15.1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Now I want you to think for a minute. Think about everything that is going on right now. Think about the Black Lives Matter protests, COVID, all the hate and the anger that's stirred up in the world right now. I want you to think about all that. <clears throat> and one of the big things that's going on right now is how we can come together as one. How can there be equality? How can there be happiness and love and friendship and unity where there seems to be no happiness, friendship, love, and unity? In Matthew 7, 1 through 2, it says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. But the Bible also says in Mark 12, 31, Love your neighbor as yourselves. That is probably the most, that is probably the Bible verse, in my opinion, that needs to be heard today. Heard today. Love your neighbor as ourself. Now, by default, when somebody thinks of neighbor, you think of the one, your literal neighbor, the one who lives just a few doors down or whatever but in the Bible neighbor actually means the one in need and right about now that's pretty much everyone everyone is in need of a couple things that we can all get if we're determined love happiness friendship and unity you cannot expect a positive change when you are using negativity to fight for positivity And in my opinion, I may be only 15, I may be young, I may be ignorant, I may be stupid. But that time for social injustice, racial injustice, and gender inju injustice needs to stop, and it needs to stop now. And one of the ways we can stop that is by loving one another, treating each other with respect, and loving each other as ourselves, and not judging each other. If we don't want to be judged, then we shouldn't judge other people. If we judge somebody unfairly, then I personally believe we're going to be judged unfairly. If you judge somebody fairly, then I personally believe you'll be judged fairly. And if you're like me, in this time of trial, tribulation, and hatred, where there seems to be no hatred, or where there seems to be hatred, and no love, no friendship, no unity, just not clicking together you wonder is there a living breathing living I already said that alive living breathing fully functional developed human living being out there that is alive right now this second and I thought about that for a long time and I thought and I thought some more and then I cried myself to sleep for a few nights and I came up with the answer. The answer is yes, there is one person just like that. And his name is Jesus. In John 14, 6, he said that he is the way and he is the truth and he is the life. We cannot get to the Father except through Jesus. I'm... I was told a saying one time, and that's, uh, you can step on however many people you want going up, 
but you are going to meet those same people coming down. Hate doesn't get to heaven. Jealousy doesn't get you to heaven. Treating somebody like they're nothing doesn't get you to heaven. Discriminating somebody for no reason does not get you to heaven for any reason. You cannot get into heaven hating each other. We cannot get into heaven by killing each other. Just the other day, during the Black Lives Matter protest, there was a uh, there was something going on at a Target, I think, Target or some kind of store, and there was some older lady in a wheelchair trying to stop protesters from getting too rowdy, too crazy, and a uh, few people started fighting and. She couldn't walk, so she was in a wheelchair. So she just tried to, you know, shout and all that. She was trying to prevent the community from causing harm. And you know what happened? Somebody stabbed her and killed her. God sees each and every one of us as equals. Sure, he may look at our skin color. But when that day of judgment comes, and it is going to come, for all of us. He's not going to look at our skin color. He's not going to look at our nationality. He's not going to look at our criminal background. He's not going to look at our political party. He's not going to look at our eye color. That's not how he's going to judge us. He's going to judge us by what is in our hearts and our minds. And if you were to die this second. I know this is getting really deep. But if you were to die this second. The second this video ends, would Jesus Christ be in your heart? If this video was to end, would you have faith that if Jesus Christ was to call his followers home, you'd be going? I'm 15 and I know one thing. I know that if Jesus Christ was to come back right now, I know I'm going. If he was to come back at 10 in the morning, I'm going. If he comes back at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning while I'm sleeping, I'm going. If he comes back while I'm asleep, I might be there a good 2 to 3 hours before I realize what happened. But I'm going. Can you say the same? Can you say that if Jesus Christ was to come back right now, I'm going? With faith and certainty? Right now, whenever you're watching this, right now, you have the same opportunity to be accepted by Jesus Christ. And that is the whole reason he died on the cross, really. Not only to forgive your sins, but to say that he loves you and you are his. When he said, it is finished, you know what that meant? The separation from us and God. And you... People, I hear people all the time say, well, when Jesus was on the cross, he was thinking a lot of things. But from what I've learned in my faithful journey, when Jesus Christ was on that cross, and he was taking our sins, and he was taking our guilt, and he was hanging on that cross, bleeding in front of all the world to see, you were on his mind. You. You. You were the one on his mind. This, that is this exact reason why he died on the cross. A lot of people think, oh, it was a political issue. It was a... Nobody... If he, they had not crucified him, it would have been a huge riot in the area. That may be. But see, it was organized. He was supposed to die on the cross. That's the whole reason why he came to earth. Is so he could take your sins and my sins... And we could be forgiven of our sins and get to heaven and be free from our sinful life and follow him. And when you come to Jesus with your sin and guilt and sorrow, he doesn't hate you. Like so many people, if you break something, if you break something and you go to a friend and you say, hey, friend, I broke this, chances are they're probably going to get angry about it. Well, it depends on really what it was. Let me think. Say it was something really valuable to them, and you break it, and say, hey, I broke this, I'm sorry. They're going to be mad, would they not? But Jesus isn't like that. 
God is not like that. When you come to Him and you say, Lord, I'm sorry. You know what He says? He doesn't say, get away from me. You, you had so many opportunities to come to me. I don't even want to hear from you anymore. Get away from me. Just, just go. Just leave. Just go. I don't want to hear from you. Whatever. He doesn't say that. He says, welcome home. That's what he says. Welcome home. <coughs> and, uh, in all of my 15 years of life, I've never done drugs. Thank God. I've never gotten drunk. I've never had sex with a prostitute. Thank God. But I can tell you, I've felt a lot of emotions in my life, my short little 15-year-old life. And I can tell you, by far, the feeling I get whenever I come to Jesus with my sin, sorrow, guilt, whatever, whenever I come to Him in prayer and ask for the forgiveness of my sins, it is like it is a new beginning, and it is. The Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Do you want to be a new creation? A creation that is covered in righteousness? A creation that has no sins in them? And even if they do have sins, it is forgiven? Then I want you to say this prayer right now. Just say it. Just say it and watch what happens. This is your moment. Your parents can't make this decision for you. If you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, they can't even make this decision for you either. Regardless of how much you love them and how much they love you, you have got to make this decision yourself. I pray that you'll make this decision for Christ. And until the next one, may God be with you. We're going to need him. Mm -hmm.